tuning in. Today I'm going to show you guys a really cool 1950s Les Paul Jr. that uh, was a pawn shop find and it's got some weird issues that I'm going to walk you guys through uh, but it's also got some really unique features that make it uh, kind of a rare guitar so uh, it just goes to show you that there are still guitars to be found at pawn shops. So let's go ahead and check this thing out. Uh, first of all it came in this amazing tweed case and I think this is a 50s lift in Gretsch case, but uh, probably someone out there can tell us exactly what this case would have been for. And if you open it up, it's got this really cool pink interior just like the Les Pauls of the day. But here's the guitar. It's a uh, super lightweight guitar. I think it weighs under seven pounds. It has a really cool cherry red finish on the body, its original finish. Uh, lots of checking and some arm wear here somewhere on the back. And uh, you'll notice as well, it has the original pick guard, tortoise shell guard, original knobs, uh, P90, and a replaced tailpiece. This is a later 60s tailpiece with the, as they call it, the lightning bolt intonation on there. But something very interesting about this guitar that uh, some of you have already spotted, and I think I mentioned it in my uh, guitar tour video I did a, a few weeks back, but this guitar has a squared off body shape, which, uh, is present on the uh, first year of the uh, double cut Les Paul, so 1958 into early 59. It's, it's a very rare, uh, desirable feature of this guitar. I actually think it looks a little better than the more rounded over version, so uh, definitely cool and uh, unique to have that. Uh, on the back, you'll notice it's super bright red, and this is right around the time period they were doing the Les Paul Burst, right? and the, the cherry red in the burst would fade uh, very quickly uh, with UV and, and sunlight. So this guitar on the back side is still super red and that's what you know, a Les Paul burst would have looked like with the red around the, the outside. On the front, it's definitely faded and this is what would happen. But so we'll take a look at the issue with this guitar and uh, it was described as a 61 Les Paul, which was obviously incorrect. I, I think this is definitely a 58, but it was also said to have a headstock break. And so looking at the front of the headstock here, you can tell uh, the front looks newer than the rest of the guitar. Figured whoever did this headstock repair uh, went ahead and, and did a veneer on top, which is not uncommon. And depending on how it cracked, uh, this this would be something that was done, but whoever did this did a really great job because it looks very authentic. They did a very very good job there. So I could tell that the the body had the original finish. You know, I was thinking worst case scenario, they veneered the front, and uh, they probably did a solid repair. Turning it around here, uh, you'll see first of all shallower tuners, which are non original. A lot of vintage guitars got shallowed back in the day. Something doesn't look right on the back here. There are no wings as they say on the back of the headstock, you know, might lead you to believe this was a fake or maybe a neck replacement. Also, this has a four digit serial number, which uh, as I did some research on it, that could be accurate if it was a very early uh, 58. However, um, normally they would have a prefix for the year on these. The ink stamp could be right, but just the way that that looks, it's also not centered in the, in the middle of the headstock there. So something's wrong. You can tell the uh, back of the neck has a different, slightly different color to it. Bottom line is either this is a replaced neck or it's uh, been refinished and God only knows. But upon further inspection, I find these little dowels on the side here. This again, this would be a repair that you might do on a Gibson headstock. Uh, if you look very closely, you will see there's actually a veneer on the back of the headstock as well. And it's about a quarter of an inch thick. And someone expertly blended this in with the neck here. And they used mahogany, and this was done a long time ago. And I mean, whoever did this was really an expert luthier, and the neck must have been, 
you know, shattered or God only knows, they really took their time and, and did this right. And it's probably as solid as it could ever be. But that explains why you don't see the, the wings on the headstock because it's veneered on the back. If you look at the top, it's, it's a little bit hard to see, but you can see the lines uh, where they are at the top there. It makes for, for an interesting story. It also brings the price of the guitar down uh, considerably, even though it still has the original finish on the body. So really, if you're looking for an affordable vintage Gibson, old mahogany, lightweight, you know, a headstock break, really, with these Gibson guitars, I always say it, but you know, it's guilt-free. I didn't have to be the one to do it or the one to repair it. And it sounds exactly the same, feels exactly the same, it saves you a lot of money. So I'm a fan of that. All right, guys, I'm gonna plug it in and just have a little bit of fun. Uh, if you guys dig this video and, and more videos like this, then please leave a comment, like, subscribe, anything like that really helps me uh, grow my channel and continue to, to put out cool content like this. It's a passion of mine and I enjoy it. So if, if you do too, then I'd love to have you uh, come around. All right, let's plug it in. This is the 58 double cut Les Paul Jr. This is a rock machine for real. Has sustained for days 
and uh, I had rolled the volume knob off. I'm sorry, the tone knob because uh, it just it gave it a thicker sound, you know, uh, not as harsh because these P90s are really strong. Uh, I'd like to measure this and see what it what it reads out at, but probably around the 8K ohms. But uh, yeah, it just sounds and, and plays like a monster, even though these frets are really quite low, actually, and super flat. I mean, it could definitely use a refret, but uh, you know, you can obviously hear the potential with this guitar. But uh, I think I put 10 to uh, 54 on this guitar right now. It sounds really thick. The back of this guitar is just beautiful. Honestly, that's the original nitrocellulose lacquer. Just beautiful. So yeah, guys, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this thing. I love it. I really do. I'd hate to get rid of this guitar, but I really only need one junior. So if you wanted one, this one has all the tone you'd ever want. Squared off body. Just looks super cool. Look at that thing. It's just a slab of mahogany. That's it. I love that, man. Looks like a telly, right? Look at that. That is amazing. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. It uh, really helps me get where I'm going, hopefully, wherever that is. So, you guys be easy, all right? Peace.